All right. Welcome, everyone. How's everyone doing? Very good. Did you have a good conference? Who stayed out after midnight at least once this week? Anybody stay out after one? Anybody stay out after two? <laughs> you win. You win. Beat me by a little bit. Anyway, I uh, want to welcome everybody. Thank everybody for coming. Uh, my name is Kevin, and uh, I'm here with Gina and Richard. Uh, they'll be presenting with us. And myself, uh, you know, I run the Java, Go, and Python team um, for gRPC. Um, so what I wanted to do, um, you know, today in the talk, most of the talk is going to be Gene and Richard talking about a bunch of the new features and going through exciting new stuff that all of you can try um, out. But before we jump into uh, that stuff, I wanted to share just some of the growth and experience of some of the developer stuff that, uh, that the team has been working on that we've done recently. Um, I'll kick things off kind of showing uh, the update of STARS uh, that we have in our GitHub project. And, and really, um, it's really exciting you know, for me when I look and see how we just continue to grow over time. Um, we've been around for quite a while now, and every time I look at this chart, I kind of, I'm, I'm afraid at what I'm going to see. You know, is it going to dip off? Is it going to dip off? But as you can see in, in every language, um, our core repo at the top and then, and then the others, um, it just continually is growing over time, uh, which is really exciting for me. Um, I also, on the right there, have the number of pull requests in several of the languages and libraries that we support. And there as well, we continue to grow and adding more and more features every day. And you're going to get to see a bunch of those uh, later today. Um, here's some of the big success uh, metrics that, that we keep an eye on and watch uh, to confirm that. Uh, the top one here is for NPM, uh, 7 million weekly downloads um, for all the Node.js users. So that's a really impressive um, number, you know, gRPC is becoming ubiqu ubiquitous uh, across the, the internet everywhere, and we're really excited about that. Um, for Python, uh, you know, 2.2 million times per day, so another really, really impressive, uh, huge number. Um, we're really excited about that. And then finally, uh, for Maven, uh, 18 million downloads per month. So these are really numbers, I think, you know, if, if you're considering gRPC, if you're considering sticking with gRPC, you can really see the, the large volume uh, of users that we have, and it continues to grow and grow every day. Uh, the team gets bigger and bigger every day, and uh, we're really excited about that, and we have all of you to thank for that, so thank you. Last slide for me. I did want to share um, a year ago at KubeCon Detroit, uh, we came and sort of asked the audience about you know, how they felt about our documentation compared to other open source projects, or were we meeting their, their expectations? And one of the things that we heard from several people was, we wish there was more. They point out a few areas we didn't have documentation. And so we went in and added 11 new documentation sections. It's been a huge effort over the last year, kind of closing a bunch of those gaps, added 32 new examples uh, across the repo. And so those are things that are really direct uh, correlation from things that we heard um, from all of you at KubeCon uh, in Detroit a year ago. And so if you do have any feedback like that to share with us, please let us know um, after the talk or during Q&A. We would love to know that and uh, do you know, whatever we can to, uh, to help give you the, the best experience uh, as, as you use things. Um, and finally, um, one of the things that we, we took on was sort of revamping our, our YouTube presence. Uh, and in the last probably six months, uh, we've put out 23 new videos on YouTube. So if you're not aware of that, that's a place where we're, we're really starting to, to put content out there. And what we're hoping to do is throughout next year, as we deliver new features, delivering a quick five minute video that goes over it, explains it, and makes it a little bit easier to consume. Um, so definitely tune in to the, to the YouTube channel um, if you haven't. So I wanted to remind everybody, the gRPC uh, 
documentation site or main website, grpcio, where you can find everything. And then two main areas where we kind of push things out. One is on YouTube, which I talked about, and the other on Twitter or X. So please feel free to follow us there. And then lastly, uh, that last group of links is, is how you can interact directly with the grpc team. So we have a, a Google group mailing list that everyone on the team is very actively you know, engaged in. We answer questions. That's a great place for you to ask a question and you'll get the entire team looking at it. Um, other things that we have is we're doing a monthly meetup. It's roughly once a month and it's, it's online. You can join and watch. Um, but as part of that, with each meeting, we're doing an office hour. So you can type your question that you have and then almost all the maintainers of GRPC are, are typically on the call or maybe at least half of them. So there'll be a dozen or more maintainers uh, in the meeting. And if you, especially if you post your question ahead of time, we can make sure that we have like a, a good answer and then you can do some dialogue directly with um, one of the GRPC, well, all of the GRPC maintainers or most of the GRPC maintainers around your question. So definitely encourage everyone to join the, the meetup and you know, it's a great place to, to ask your, your questions as well and get kind of a live face-to-face -face answer. And then the last one, uh, we run something that uh, we call Meet a Maintainer. And what Meet a Maintainer is, is sort of scheduling sort of like a, a 30 minute or a one hour sort of deep dive with one of the main maintainers from GRPC. Um, it's mostly, you know, it's, it's two things. It's one is for us to learn about what you like, what you want, how you're using GRPC, where you struggle, where you're not struggling, what's working, what isn't. And the other half is it's a great chance for you to talk about your architecture, talk about your app, talk about what you're trying to build and get, you know, support, help, um, start that uh, deeper relationship with the GRPC team to help you achieve your, your goals. And so definitely encourage everyone, um, you know, feel free to, uh, you know, we would love to speak to you, learn more about what you're doing and schedule time to, to do that. So uh, you can use the link here. So with that, I'm gonna hand it off to uh, Richard, talk about some developer tools. Thanks, Kevin. <clears throat> All right, so my name is Richard Belleville. I am the tech lead for gRPC Python. I do a bunch of dev work there, as well as uh, Kubernetes integrations and service mesh. Uh, the first thing that I wanna spend some time to talk about today is developer tooling. Some of these tools you may know about already. Some of these hopefully will be a surprise to you, but uh, all of them are gonna help you along your gRPC journey. Uh, so the first one is gRPC debug. This is a command line tool. It provides you with a range of debugging information, such as stats about how many RPCs have been sent or failed, as well as address resolution results and XDS configurations. So you can really get down to the nitty gritty of what is happening within your gRPC stack. Um, so you should reach for this whenever you want to troubleshoot gRPC. Uh, then we've got grp curl. Uh, this is similar to the curl CLI tool that I'm sure you're all familiar with from just making web requests. Um, grp curl enables you to send RPCs from the CLI either with or without reflection. So you don't necessarily need to have those protos on your file system. Uh, grp curl does a great job of letting you inspect the types within your API. So it provides this really satisfying dev loop of query what an API looks like and then manually call it using the information that you just learned. And finally, a tool that I'm sure many of you already know and love outside of the gRPC space, um, Postman now has full support for gRPC, allowing you to make RPCs from a GUI, including streaming RPCs, so pretty advanced, full-featured gRPC functionality. Um, and for more, for more details, uh, hop on over to the Postman website and check out the ex excellent talk that Postman gave at gRPC 2023. All right, so moving on to something close to home at KubeCon, we've got the Gateway API. Uh, the Kubernetes Gateway API is a recent API that provides a more extensible way to manage traffic routing in Kubernetes clusters. It's designed as a revamp of the ingress resource to get rid of vendor-specific implementations and annotations. The special interest group behind the Gateway APIs identified the most common use cases for annotations on ingress resources and built them directly into the Gateway API. So we have worked with this special interest group to uh, introduce a new resource within the Gateway API called gRPC Route, so that you can more idiomatically route gRPC traffic rather than having to drop down and route it at the level of HTTP. 
Uh, so gRPC route is currently in the experimental stream of the Gateway API, and we expect it to be promoted to v1 in the coming months, hopefully by KubeCon Paris. Um, it's currently supported by GCP Traffic Director and a bunch of other controllers that you can see listed there. Um, the other really exciting thing within the uh, Gateway API space is Gamma. So this is using the Gateway APIs not just for ingress, but also for service mesh use cases, so east-west traffic. Um, and we've been really engaged in the design process to ensure that uh, gRPC proxyless service mesh is a first-class citizen in the APIs. So uh, stay tuned for the ability to uh, use vendor-agnostic Kubernetes resources to manage your gRPC proxyless service mesh. Um, we're also really excited to share that stateful session affinity support is now available in gRPC C++. This is a load balancing technique that ensures all requests from a particular client session are routed to the same backend server. This is useful for applications that maintain per session state information, such as shopping carts, user profiles, and game sessions. Uh, gRPC implements stateful session affinity using cookies. When the first request is sent out, the gRPC client XDS stack routes it to a server as normal based on the configured LB policies. So round robin, pick first, the ones you all know and love. Um, in this example, request one happens to go to server two based on that load balancing policy. Server two then encodes its identity into a cookie and populates the set cookie response header with it. And you can see that, uh, that set cookie header being attached to response one there. The client then receives this set cookie header in the response and uses the cookie in it to define a session. All subsequent requests in that session need to be populated with the cookie, and the gRPC routing stack will ensure that all requests with that cookie get routed to server two persistently. So here, the client wants to send request two, which is also in the same session as request one. It populates request two with the cookie returned in response one, and the gRPC XDS stack makes sure that that gets to server two based on the cookie. Um, until cookie expiration, or until server two goes down, all requests with this cookie are going to be routed to server two. And as a result, you're guaranteed to always hit a warm cache for that session, which will significantly speed up your application. It's a big win for latency critical applications. And with that, I will hand it over to Gina. Thank you, Richard. Hello, everyone. My name is Gina. I'm a tech lead manager of gRPC Go team at Google. So in the previous slides, Richard talked about what Staffle Session Affinity is and how it generally works. So now let's take a look how to enable it on Traffic Director. We have introduced a new custom resource called GCP Session, or GCP Session Affinity Policy. And in the YAML file, you set the cookie TTL time in seconds. And um, the session cookie will be expired at the time that you provide it here. And then you can set the target resource uh, to specify, target, target reference to specify which route or service that you want to enable Staffle Session Affinity on. So that's all you need to do. And to learn more about um, Staffle Session Affinity, check out the show link below, uh, which will take you to a deep dive talk about Staffle Session Affinity at KuCon Europe earlier this year. Another gRPC new feature is custom backend metrics for load balancing. So this is a mechanism in the gRPC library that allows you to inject your custom metrics at the gRPC server. And the, these metrics can be used for load balancing decision. We follow the open request cost aggregation standard, and you can report your custom metrics in two ways. The first option is your service attached the metrics in the trailing metadata when the RPC finishes. And another option is periodically sending the metrics to us out of band. The custom backend metrics is available on production now. And if you want to learn more about it, check out the documentation at the short link below. And that will take you to our developer guide uh, with example code across all the multiple languages. We recently added support of weighted round robin low balancing policy, and it can be used with the custom metrics that we just talked about a few minutes ago. It is really simple to configure your server if you are using GCP traffic director. You just set the custom policy as weighted round robin with the parameters based on your use cases. If you prefer to send the metrics out of event, just set Enable OOB load report to true, 
and we have additional parameters for you to fine tune the behavior of the Wendy Round Robin policy. You can still leverage our Wendy Round Robin policy if you are not using GCP traffic director. Here we have the example code in Goland, and you can set the low balancing config with a configuration in just some format when calling dial from your drop PC application. Once you config the policy as way they run Robin, the next step is to send metrics from your backends. Here is the formula that how gRPC load balancer selects a backend service with the metrics that you send to us, which includes the CPU utilization, QPS, EPS, and error penalty. Below is an example of using out-of-band reporting. In the gRPC Go server code, you create a server matrix recorder with the options feature needs, like the minimum reporting interval, and then register your recorder and start sending metrics like CPU utilization, QPS, EPS, at any places that you like to. That's all you need to do to enable waiting round robin provided by gRPC and more details can be found at the short link below. Next, randomized, randomized pick first. So we are extending the existing pick first policy uh, with a flag to shovel the address order for you. Um, we all know that pick first is a very straightforward OB policy and just like its name, when the name resolver returns a list of addresses, we try to connect to the first one and then the second one if the first attempt failed. Pick first is commonly used when the DNS server is shuffling the address order, and in some cases where the DNS server doesn't support shuffle or randomization, you can simply set a flag, shuffle address list in your drop PC code, and we will shuffle the order for you. We are excited to announce that microservices observability is generally available across all the languages that gRPC supports. This is a powerful tool for you to gain insights into your systems, and it helps you to quickly troubleshoot the problem, improve the performance and reliability of your microservices, and so you can make better decisions about how to manage or architect your system. Microservices observability provides three different types of data. First of all, it has metrics, such as how many RPCs started or completed over the time. Secondly, traces, which represent how long RPCs takes to complete, also known as round trip latency. Last but not least, logs that you added from your microservices. That could be the message payload, the final status, or the error code. If you are using a microservices-based architecture, you should definitely enable observability to get all the benefits that I just mentioned. And it's really simple. All you have to do is to provide an observability config and gRPC will, will send metrics, traces, and logs to or you to Google Cloud Platform or any other third-party services that you are using. We build a unified plugin integrated with any platform which supports open senses, metrics, and traces. And this makes it easy to identify and troubleshoot the problems, regardless of the stack that you are using today. Here, I want to show you an example of the observability configuration. To enable cloud monitoring, all you have to do is to add cloud monitoring object as a value that we have on the slide. And in the tr cloud trace, it could be overwhelming if you are sending every single trace because the amount could be huge. So you can specify the sampling rate to fit your needs. And in this example, only 5% of the trace data are randomly selected and sent to the platform that you selected. In the cloud logging, you can list out the events that you're interested or use star to, uh, to reference all the relevant events or exclude certain events that you are not interested. After that, you will need to add a few lines of code into your application. And here we are showing the code snippets in Golan. In the main function called observability.start and passing a context to start a feature, 
metrics, traces, and logs will be sent to Google Cloud Platform or other third-party services that we are using. And don't forget to call observability.end to flush the data and clear the message, clear the memory and resource before closing down your surface. That's all you need to enable microservices observability, which helps you to gain insights of your system, uh, system's performance and identify the potential, potential problems. A few more of the fancy features that I'd like to take this chance to talk about. The first one is custom LB policy. If our building LB policy doesn't fit your needs, you can definitely bring your own custom LB policy to gRPC. And we recently added support of RBAC HTTP filter for service and method scope client authorization on XDS enabled gRPC servers. Last but not least, gRPC clients currently support both IPv4 and IPv6. However, most language implementation do not have support for individual backends, which has both IPv4 and IPv6 address, and we are actively adding support to it. In the near future, the Resolver LLB policy API will support multiple addresses per endpoint, and happy eyeballs will be used to determine the address. And next, we recently added support of Java modules. So the module name of the gRPC jar file will be automatically generated. Another new feature that we have in gRPC Java is list request load balancing, which distributes the incoming request to the server with the least number of active actions at the time that the request is received. It is designed to, dis it, it is designed to improve the server utilization and the response time by ensuring that the requests are evenly distributed among all the available servers. An interesting fact, Java implementation of this in gRPC is actually contributed by Spotify, and we want to encourage all of you to bring your core cool ideas to gRPC and benefit all the gRPC users across the world. And with that, I will hand it over to Richard. Yeah, thanks, Gina. <laughs> All right, so over the past few releases of gRPC Python, we've actually removed all external Python dependencies. So the library is now lighter and easier to install than ever. Um, we've also added support for Apple Silicon, so M1 and M2 chips, ARM64. And in the latest release, you'll find Mac Universal dynamic libraries, which can be run on both ARM64 and x86 chips. Uh, then in gRPC C core, so that's sort of an internal term for uh, the library that C++, Python, Ruby, and PHP gRPC implementations wrap, uh, we've introduced Event Engine, a new public interface for applications to provide custom implementations for I.O. and asynchronous execution. So, for example, you can drive gRPC using external event loops, such as libuv. Um, you can actually implement your own event engine in C++ and override various methods with the behavior that you want. So you simply call set event, set event engine factory to get started using event engine. Over on the C++ side, uh, we've recently upgraded the way that we notify you when asynchronous RPC events occur. So we're excited to introduce what's called the new callback API. You no longer need to manage threads and regularly pull completion queues, which can be tricky to get right. Instead, the gRPC C++ library will invoke user-provided callbacks when RPC action is complete. Uh, so the callback API provides a set of methods for your application to initiate operations. And then your application can also override methods like on read done and on write done to get notifications when those RPC actions complete. And back over to Gina. Thanks. So for gRPC Go, uh, we, we introduced a new channel state idle as the initial state. And it will transition into the ready state when the connection are established. If there is a period of time without using RPC, we will temporarily move the channel state to idle and close down the open connections to optimize the performance for you. And when the new RPC comes in, the connection will be automatically reestablished for you and no additional effort is required from your application. This feature has been available on Java and C core and we recently extended the support to Golang. You can customize the idle timeout with the codes that I have on the slides. Another new feature that was released about a few weeks ago um, in gRPC Go is list request load balancing. 
So if you are interested in low balance, least request low balancing in Go, um, check out our latest release. So that brings us to the end of the talk. Uh, visiting the grpc.io site for documentation and example code, subscribing to our YouTube channel to get notifications when new videos are available, joining our monthly meetup and to get the latest updates of grpc, you can also request a conversation to meet with the maintainers to answer any questions that you might have. Joining our GRPC mailing list to get the latest updates. And finally, follow us on X or Twitter. Thanks for joining us. And we have a couple more minutes to take questions. Sorry, I, I didn't. Th I don't think I got the question part of it. Uh, do you have a set of recommendations for working with a single proxy instead of like relying on uh, RPC built in load balancers? I see. Um, I would say that we on the gRPC team are the experts on tuning Envoy. We've spent a lot of time on the proxy list stack. Um, I do think that there are some good recommendations from the Envoy team that we've worked with directly. Um, and I think we can send you those offline if you want to talk to me in the hall afterwards. Any other questions? Oh, here we have one. So I, I missed the first part. You might have discussed this, but like one of the challenges that we have using gRPC um, on front end applications is like visibility of the payload, maybe like, you know, with an F12 and just kind of traceability of kind of what's going on. Sometimes they, it causes some friction. Front end developers honestly aren't fans of gRPC. So um, any, any improvements in that area? Um, so I, I, we do have the microservices observability, which was available for Java and Go since last year. In the browser. Oh, in the browser. So that's for the, this is more for yeah, our GRPC yeah, web. That, that's where the most friction is in the. Yeah. So, so one right. of the, the feedbacks, we recently did the, um, GRPC com. So we ran a conference, uh, at Google a few months ago. Uh, and that conference was basically, you know, focused all around gRPC. And one of the feedbacks that we got at that conference was basically more interest in gRPC web. And, you know, we've made a, a decision to make a much larger investment in that, uh, you know, starting very, very early next year and a little bit at the end of this year. And so we should be, you should be seeing a lot more um, improvements and additional work there. And that's something that we heard loud and clear um, from our from our community at our at our conference recently. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Stay tuned, and and hopefully you'll see more of what you're what you're looking for for sure. And I think uh, not exactly browser related, but uh, you know things like Postman support is another thing that we're excited about for. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Cool. Any other questions from anyone? Questions, comments, feature requests? So Richard, Gene, and I will stick around uh, either in the room or out in the hall, depending on if there's another talk coming up. So feel free to come and ask us. Uh, again, I want to thank all of you uh, for coming to see our talk. And a uh, reminder, feel free. Uh, we, we would love to have you join the, the mailing list. Uh, our YouTube channel and uh, Twitter if you haven't done so all, uh, already. So enjoy your rest of your time uh, here in Chicago. And thanks again, everyone.